Today's tutorial we will cover a simple up counter in the Kinko HMI wire. Let's go start Kinko HMI wire. We're going to name this project timer. So once this opens up, we'll create a new project. Let's close this project. New project. Timers. Timer. Okay. Let's go ahead and just select any HMI we'll do. Okay. MT5720T. Now let's go ahead and go to the editor window. First, let's go ahead and select the timer attribute so let's go ahead and timer timer function parts so the timers in the function parts tab of the graph element window so let's go ahead and select and drag over here we have the trigger mode all time means that as soon as the HMI is powered on this timer will begin executing initial frame means as soon as this frame opens up the timer will start executing. Close frame means as soon as this frame closes, the timer will start executing. And by reg address, by reg address means that this timer will begin executing when the trigger address is triggered or gone high. So for this demo, we're going to do initial frame. So when this frame opens, the timer should begin executing. So I'm going to set the execution cycle to one second the response mode to delay um, the repeat count to zero zero means it's always executing so it'll continually execute 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 and over here we're gonna execute a macro which we have yet to create so let's go ahead and do that right now so select OK and then we'll come back to this to tie the macro okay so this is an, this is the, and so there's a the timer component we can place it anywhere it's invisible so it doesn't really matter uh, and now we're going to create a new macro. We're going to call this timer. So I'm going to go ahead and delete all this because we don't need it. I already know it. You can read it on your own time. So let's go ahead and add a few variables here. Let's go ahead and LW2, our variable name, we'll call seconds. We will make this a unsigned short. Address will be LW2. Okay. Let's make the seconds plural. Okay. Uh, add another variable. Call it minutes. LW4. Okay. Make this. Add another variable. Hours. And let's make this LW6. Okay. So first thing we're going to do is increment seconds. So we'll go seconds plus plus. So every t so every second when the timer triggers, the second count the seconds count will increment. So let's go ahead and do that. So the next thing we're gonna do is check to see if seconds is at 59. So if seconds equals equals 59. Oops, wrong braces. We want to go ahead and clear the seconds. Go ahead and line this up. Sorry. Uh, we want to go ahead and clear the seconds, so equals zero. We will want to go ahead and increment minutes, minutes plus plus. And we basically want to do the same exact thing for minutes. So if minutes equals 59 and seconds equals 59, right? Because minutes can equal 59. But then seconds could be zero, so at that point, you know, we would skip an entire minute. So that's why we have to insert both. We can go ahead and once again clear seconds, clear minutes, oops, and increment hours. And then we can go ahead and continue uh, these if statements by making an exception of if hours is equal to 12 we can make it so that it's non-military time and it rolls back over to 1 and then begins incrementing from there or we can let it go all the way to 24 
and then continue and then add a, a days register and increment the day and, and basically start all over but for today's tutorial we'll just go hours minutes seconds and you know we'll let it run for however long it's gonna run for let's say 50 hours no restrictions okay so semicolon there let's go ahead and just see if it'll compile see if we have any mistakes we have no mistakes so this is great and all I mean this macro is firing in the background at all times but it's really not displaying anything to the users so the next thing we got to do is tie a numeric display to this so that it shows up on the GUI so number display we will go LW2 that's the second register we will go 99 maximum integer value of 2 Let's go ahead and change the font to, uh, you know, 48 vector font. Well, Calibri. I'm a big fan of Calibri. Uh, let's go ahead and make this. Just go ahead and select 30. And select the yellow because I like the contrast with the black. Okay. So, also, I don't like the graphics, so let's get rid of it. Okay. So now we just are left with a it's two numbers so I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste it do the same oops I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste it move it over no avast I do not want a performance alert double click on it changes to LW4 which is the minutes register I'll go ahead and copy and paste that once again just move it over we're going to do the same exact thing, except we're going to change this to LW6. That's the hours register. Okay. And I'm going to do one last thing. I'm going to make a big Calibri semicolon, or sorry, colon. Color, yellow, okay. Copy, paste, and just place that there and place this one oops nope just want to move it place this one here and I'm going to align them uh, do a vertical alignment horizontal alignment sorry control save tools uh, let's go back to our timer we never tied that macro to it and it did it automatically but say if we were to add four macros just now you know who knows which one I would have selected so since there's only one it selected the right one Go ahead and select OK. Let's go ahead and do an offline simulation. So let's compile once again. No errors and offline simulation. Simulate. And there we go. Um, one second timer that is just triggering a macro to increment a count. And uh, if you if we sit here long enough, you'll see that the minutes will start to increment as well. Well, that's it for today's tutorial. Uh, I'm glad you tuned in. If you have any other questions, please visit www.anaheimautomation.com. Have a great day.